All right, guys, let's talk about some audio theory with the Nyquist theorem. All right, guys, so I thought I had actually covered this topic in the past, but I have this document where I keep track of all my YouTube episodes, and I actually ran a search on the document, and it looks like I haven't done a video that focuses entirely on the Nyquist theorem. So I've discussed sample rate, but I haven't really dug into the Nyquist theorem in detail, so I figured that's what we would do today. So the Nyquist theorem is super intertwined with the concept of sample rate. So if you need a refresher on the concept of sample rate, um, I'll put a card up on the screen for you guys and you can pause and go check that out if you like. I also have some handouts that are on my website, which is catonoise.com, and those handouts are available to Patreon patrons. So if you guys want to pause and then go check those out as well to get a little refresher, um, I do recommend that because what we're going to be discussing today really does require an understanding um, a basic understanding of what sample rate is and how it works and stuff like that. And I will put links in the description below for you guys so that you can easily find that content. So feel free to pause, scroll down, get that refresher, and then come back here. Um, and please do consider becoming a Patreon patron. I will be showing you guys some more handouts that are new today, and those handouts are going to be available on my website, katanoise.com, for those Patreon patrons. All right, so what is the Nyquist theorem? So when we're talking about the Nyquist theorem, we're talking about audio when it's being converted from analog into digital. That's when the Nyquist theorem comes into play. And basically, the Nyquist theorem states that for each frequency of audio, if we want to accurately recreate that frequency in the digital realm, that we just have to sample that frequency cycle at least twice. That's all it says. So basically, the Nyquist theorem is a huge part of why 44.1 uh, kilohertz is one of the lower samples rates that we tend to use in recording. And I'll get into why on that in a minute here. All right, so I made this part of the handout so you guys can understand uh, the concept behind sampling each cycle at least twice. So up here, we're only sampling once, and down here, we are sampling twice, right? So you look at the cycle. So um, basically, a cycle is the pattern that it makes before it then repeats. So I tell people when they're thinking about something like a sine wave, it's when it's completed a circle. So it goes up and around, and if you were to take this part and rotate it over, it would form a complete circle. So, um, but you can also just think of it as, you know, um, when it starts to repeat its pattern. So it does this up and then down, and then it starts to repeat. So now it's doing up and then down again. So that's one cycle. So we have the wavelength here is also dependent on the length of the cycle. So what the Nyquist theorem is saying is that this is not going to be adequate. Sampling the cycle once, we're going to need to sample it at least twice to accurately recreate this frequency, right? And so you'll notice that these both are the same wavelength. So this value is equal to this value. The cycle has the same length. Um, and you could think of this as distance or time. It doesn't have to be time here. I just had time written down on this handout. Um, I adapted an older handout for a different um, topic, and that's what I had here. So anyway, um, all this is showing you is you have to sample at least twice. That's what the Nyquist theorem is saying. All right, so let's talk about why that is. So moving on to this third page here. Okay, so we know in audio that when we have a lower frequency or a lower pitch, that it's going to have a longer wavelength. So it's going to look something more like this one down here rather than this one up here. So um, longer wavelengths, the cycle takes longer to complete. That means lower frequency, lower pitch. That's stuff like our bass frequencies, right? Our really low pitched frequencies. And then when we're talking about shorter wavelengths, so the cycle takes shorter amount of time or distance, depending on how you're thinking about it, um, to complete then you have a higher frequency or a higher pitch, right? So that's something that we know in audio, and that comes into play here. And so we also know that the frequency range of human hearing is generally considered to be 20 hertz to 20 kilohertz. That's like an ish thing. You know, there are people with shorter ranges than that, people with wider ranges than that, but it's generally considered to be 20 hertz to 20 kilohertz. Um, and so that basically means you have wavelengths that range from 17 meters to about 1.7 centimeters long. So that's a big range in terms of wavelength. So if we think of sampling audio, kind of like a connect the dots. And I know it's not that simple, so please don't come at me. 
But um, you can kind of think of it like that, kind of like a connect the dots. Um, then what we see is that if we have two samples per frequency cycle, then we're able to at least get a rough idea of what that wavelength is, that frequency is. Whereas if we only have one sample per cycle, when we then connect the dots here, um, we're not getting anything close to an accurate depiction of that frequency. So this is really why the Nyquist theorem is true, right? Once you look at it like a connect the dots kind of, it really, it really clarifies itself. It really seems to make sense. So we can see very clearly that we do need to at least sample twice to get anything close to the frequency or the waveform that we are trying to sample and convert into digital. So now that we understand what the Nyquist theorem is and how it's true, we can talk about how it affects us. So... So once we realize why the Nyquist theorem is true, it becomes very clear to us that as we reduce the sample rate for our audio, that we're gonna start losing those higher frequencies first. And that's because they have these shorter wavelengths, right? So in this example, I have the amount of time between the samples here are equal. But you'll notice with those higher frequencies, we are now not accurately recreating this wavelength, but we are able to accurately recreate this lower frequency wavelength. So when we reduce that sample rate, we lose these high pitches, these upper frequencies. And that's why you might notice when we reduce that sample rate to something like really low, like 8,000 hertz, for example, you're gonna hear those upper frequencies dropping out and it can kind of sound underwater or like murky sounding. Um, and it's because of this concept, right? That that's happening and that's why you hear that difference, that specific difference. You know, our audio loses clarity in that instance. You know, we're losing those upper frequencies, so we're losing clarity. And I'll actually link to a video that I showed to my college students in the description below here. I didn't make the video. It's, um, I think another college made the video, like another professor. Um, it's kind of a silly video, but it does uh, show an experiment where someone lowered the sample rate and um, it's on the, a song and it's the same song with higher sample rates and then lower sample rates. And so you can really hear that effect in this video. So I'll link to that in the description below for you guys so you can go check that out and hear it and hopefully understand it a little better because of that. Anyway, we want to be able to recreate all of those audible frequencies within the range of human hearing. So since higher frequencies are a concern when we're thinking about the Nyquist theorem, we want to then set the sample rate high enough that we can recreate the highest frequencies of human hearing, so around 20 kilohertz, right? All right, so what does the Nyquist theorem say? It says that we have to sample those frequencies at least twice. So if we're talking about 20 kilohertz, right, 20,000 hertz, that's 20,000 cycles per second. So in order to sample that at least twice, we're gonna have to double that and make it at least 40,000, right? So 40 kilohertz. So once we understand that concept, it's no wonder that when we open up our DAW in the recording studio, the lowest sample rates that we even have as an option are usually over 40 kilohertz, right? Because there usually aren't even any options that are below 40 kilohertz. Like 44.1 tends to be the lowest option that we tend to have in any given DAW. And you know, I've heard a few reasons for why we have 44.1 kilohertz specifically, and it's really interesting, but I think that's maybe a topic for a deep dive in and of itself. So I think that's gonna be a topic for another video, or we can talk about it in the comments below if you guys like. So, you know, feel free to comment about that. I think it's pretty cool. Um, but I think that's basically it for the Nyquist theorem and for today. And so I hope this made sense. I hope some of you guys find this useful, um, find this helpful. I hope you guys like this type of theory video. So let me know what you think in the comments below. And as always, if you like this video, you know, like, comment, subscribe, hit the notification bell. I would appreciate all those things. And if you do want access to these extra documents that my Patreon patrons get, and if you want to support my channel more directly, I do have that Patreon. So it's patreon.com slash Kato Noise. And I also recently put up a mixing checklist for my Patreon patrons on my website. So that's something that's up there now too. And there's a whole bunch of other content. Um, you can kind of preview it if you go to my website or if you go to my Patreon, you can preview what's there before you make the decision. So um, feel free to do that. I'd really appreciate it. So I think that's about it. I come out with new videos every Wednesday and thank you for watching. Okay.